The Lord be with you. Hello everyone and welcome to CPC's online worship service for Sunday, November 22. I'm grateful that you've chosen to spend this time with me virtually. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to this time of worship. A couple of announcements I'd like to share with you. First of all, just a reminder that all the announcements uh, are sent out from the church office each Friday by email. So everything is, is in print for you there through email. If you do not have email, uh, we're sending out hard copies to anyone who doesn't have email. So please let us know about that if you're not receiving it. But I did want to mention that we're currently receiving two special offerings. Uh, first of all, the Thanksgiving offering, which we receive this time every year in support of the Presbyterian Children's Home of the Highlands in Whitful. We've been receiving this offering uh, throughout the month of November. We will continue until the end of November. And so I invite you as you're able to uh, make a gift for this important special offering. Also, uh, we are now receiving the Montgomery County Christmas Store offering, which we receive this time every year in support of the overall mission of <clears throat> the Christmas Store. So uh, with that as well, I invite you as you're able to contribute toward this important offering in support of the Montgomery County Christmas Store. I do want to point out that the church office will be closed this coming Thursday and Friday uh, for the Thanksgiving holiday. And finally, I would ask you please to take note of everyone on our prayer list, which is a part of the announcements we send out uh, each, each Friday from the church office. Please keep all these folks in your prayers. Once again, thanks for tuning in for our time of worship today. Please join me now in prayer. Eternal God, you have given us minds to know you. You have given us hearts to love you. You have given us voices to sing your praise. As we turn to you now in this time of worship, we ask you to bless us with a reverent sense of your presence. Help us to be at peace. Help us to worship you with all our minds, hearts, and spirits, and souls. This we ask in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.
The scripture reading for today is from the 25th chapter of Matthew's Gospel. Listen now for God's word to you. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? Then the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. I have to say that I wish it were that simple. The way Matthew tells the story, everything is so straightforward and, and so clear cut. Sheep go over here, goats go over here. No questions, no ambiguity. A line is drawn and there's no doubt about who is on which side. I wish it were that simple. But you know, that just has not been my experience of life. Things are never that simple. Go through a checklist and categorize people as either a sheep or a goat, those who cared for the least of these and those who did not. But most of the time, I don't find life to be that clear cut. And I don't imagine you do either. Recently, I was on my way home from the church driving along West Main Street and I saw a man that I recognized as one of the least of these. He was sitting on a bench outside over near Burger King. I know who he is. He often knocks on the church door during the week looking for help. And sometimes we're able to offer help. And other times we don't have any resources and I, I tell him, sorry, can't do anything for you. So the question is, does that make me a sheep or a goat? Am I blessed on those days when help is possible and then cursed on those days when help isn't possible? I don't know. Am I a good sheep one day and a lousy goat on another day? Don't know. Honestly, I'm not sure it comes down 
to that. I'm not sure it comes down to just two easy, clear-cut categories. Either you're a sheep or you're a goat. My experience is that we are both. We are a mix, a mix of sheep and goat, as it were. And I expect you probably have a story a lot like mine, a time when you fed or clothed or, or visited or cared for one of the least of these. And a story about another time when you drove past or looked away or pretended not to see the man or the woman holding a sign asking for food or work or some other kind of help. I expect you could tell either story and recognize the mix within yourself. I expect we could all offer reasons for, for doing what we did in a particular circumstance like that, why we, we helped one day and then why we didn't help on another day. We can defend our choices, we can justify our actions. And I, I would venture to say that most of the time, our reasons, our explanations for helping or not helping are based on what we believe about this other person, how much they do or do not deserve to be helped. We evaluate the other person and make a decision about how deserving they are. Do they deserve help? Do they not deserve help? And we make our decision about whether to help or not to help on what we assume about that other person. And that's how we explain our response. It's based on what we think about the other person. I want to suggest that maybe that's not what this story in Matthew is about. Maybe it's not about sizing up the other person so much as it's about telling the truth about my life, telling the truth about your life. Maybe it's about getting really real with my story and my life and my circumstances. And maybe the story is about how it is that the least of these always seem to have a way of revealing to us the truth of who we are, the truth of what our life is about. The least of these. We've all encountered people we would consider to be the least of these. They're, they're in all of our lives. And sure, uh, you know, it, it may be someone we would stereotype, but sometimes they don't always fit our stereotyped images. Yes, it might be the guy on the street asking for a handout. It might be a welfare mother asking for food or some guy who just got out of prison. But sometimes, though, it's somebody much closer to you than that. Even someone who lives under the same roof as you. Maybe even someone who sits across the table from you. And it's not always about physical needs either. The least of these also have emotional needs have spiritual needs, the need to love and to be loved. The least of these are, are in all our relationships. They are the people over whom we have some sense of power, the people over whom we have some sense of control. They're the ones who have less resources than we have, the ones who have less options than we have. They're the ones overwhelmed by life and underwhelmed by support. They are the ones who feel like they're hanging by a thread and they look to you as if you have the scissors. They're the ones we intimidate simply because of who we are, simply because of what we have, simply because of what we can do for them or refuse to do for them. Now, I'll take it for granted that we all do want to make a difference. We want to make a difference in the life of other people. We want to make a difference in the world around us. Maybe that's why sometimes we struggle so much with our decisions and the choices we make. 
deep down, we really do want to make a difference. What I want to point out today, though, is this. You don't have to try to make a difference because you're making a difference already. Every single one of us is making a difference, a difference that can be for good or a difference that might be not so good, for good or for ill. Either way, we're always making a difference. And we often don't even know it. We often don't even know. In this reading from Matthew, the people who gathered for judgment, they didn't know. They didn't know what difference they were making. They were just going on about their lives. Some cared for the least of these and others didn't. Either way, they didn't know. They seemed oblivious as to the consequences or the effects of their actions. They all asked the same question. Well, when did we see you? When was it we saw you? They didn't even know what kind of difference they were making. Now, it would be tempting to literalize this story, but let's not do that. Let's not make this into a search for the least of these so that we can be helpful and caring in order to score points and get to heaven. Let's not start counting. Let's not start keeping score of how many people we help and how many people we pass by, how many we said yes to and how many we overlooked or said no to. Let's not go that route. Besides, how would you measure that anyway? Do you need 70% to pass? Do you just total up the two columns at the end of your life and see which is greater, the cared for column or the didn't care for column? No, that's not what this is about. Besides, that's too easy. We already know we should help and care for one another. Rather than being a scorecard, I think that this story names the reality that we live in, a reality that pulls us in different directions, a reality in which we often contradict ourselves. It's a reality where we always have choices before us, and what we choose always makes a difference for better or for worse. It always matters what we do. It always makes a difference in someone's life. And maybe the sheep and goat image, maybe the sheep and goat image worked in Jesus' day, but I don't think it makes much sense to us today. Maybe we need a new image. Maybe we need a new way of understanding what's going on. Maybe, what if, what's really being said is that we are being pulled by God in one direction and we are pulled in another direction by our lesser selves. Or maybe we could see it as the conflict between our humanity and our inhumanity. Or maybe another way would be to say that if we, to say that we live in the light and we follow a path of light and that we also live in the darkness and follow that path. It's never just one or the other. In real life, it's always both, isn't it? We're always both. I think that if we're completely honest with ourselves, we can see that about ourselves. If we look deep within, if we look deep within, then we can see both the light that is within us, and the darkness that is within us. We see that within each of us, there is something of God, something real and true, something of God within us, something that is divine. And there is something within us that is broken, something that is deeply not right. So, what if this story isn't so much about reward or punishment. What if 
It isn't so much about judgment. What if it's not so much about determining your eternal blessing or your eternal cursing? What if maybe instead, maybe the story is just trying to push us a bit further to look at the truth of our lives, to see that we are a mixed bag. And maybe the story wants us to look more closely at the choices we make and to be aware that our choices really do matter. And one thing is for sure, those choices are always, always coming to us. Just look in the headlines in the news and you can see the choice between light and dark, the political enmity, the riots in the streets, the random killings, the allegation of sexual abuse by powerful and prominent men, even in the church. Not to mention the guy sitting on the bench over by Burger King. All these things present choices. And those choices aren't just on the outside of us. The choices live within us. The choices originate within us, within each of us. How you choose within determines the course of what you do outside yourself. It sets a true trajectory and direction for your life. And it happens every day, one day at a time, many choices, many, many times over the span of your life. It's not a one-time event. It's not a single decision. It's a series of choices, choices made by us, choices made by us. In the story of Matthew, the king, simply observes and names what is. The king simply says what he sees. We make the choices. I guess the question to ask ourselves is, what do we see when we look at our lives? What are the least of these showing us about ourselves? What do we observe about ourselves. I do not want you to hear this story as a final judgment on your life, no. Instead, I hope for us to hear it as a wake up call, a wake up call. Let it be the chance to see ourselves through the eyes of the least of these. When they look at us, what do they see? And is that who we want to be? Is that who we choose to be? Today, Jesus says, just as you did or didn't do to one of the least of these, you didn't or did do to me. That's the gift that the least of these offer us. They give us a chance to see the truth of our life. They set a choice before us. And it's not just a choice to help or not to help. It's a choice between our humanity and our inhumanity. It's a choice between our light and our darkness. So, which do we choose? And who will we be? Amen.
Will you please join with me now in prayer? Let us pray. Eternal God, help us now to pause. In Christ Jesus, you taught us to pray and you promised that in him you hear us and you will answer us. We want to express our gratitude, though we know that words alone cannot tell our true feelings. But we do thank you. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for our homes and loved ones. Thank you for your care for us. We are glad that you have called us to yourself and you've given us a sense of direction and meaning in life. We thank you that we can turn to you whenever we need help or guidance. We are grateful for the relationship we share with you and we pray that we may always grow closer and know you more completely day by day. Lord, in your kindness, hear our prayer. We pray for your love and your power in our lives and throughout the whole world. We hope for peace and justice in all places. We ask you to order the unruly powers that destroy life. We pray that you would help us deal with the places of darkness in our world so that we and all your children may freely enjoy the earth that you have made. Keep us always hopeful and empower us to do what is right through Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord, in your kindness, hear our prayer. God of mercy, you bear the hurt of the world. <clears throat> we ask you to look in love upon your people. Be close to them and to those who are in their silent prayers. Bless and strengthen those who are sick. Comfort those who are lonely. Reassure those who are losing hope. May your spirit fill our lives and bring joy and peace and satisfaction and love. Let us sense your closeness. Keep us filled with faith and hope and love so that we may enjoy life and share its goodness with one another. Lord, in your kindness, hear our prayer. We pray for those we know who have special needs. This day in particular, we lift our prayers for Susan Bell, for Sarah Donnelly, for the family and loved ones of Charlotte Davis in their grief, for Rhonda Settles and Jane Hammond. We pray for the family and loved ones of Stell Chandler in their grief. We continue to pray for Ralph Clements and Mary Taylor, for the family and loved ones of Kagan Fisher and their grief. We pray for Sarah, for Sandra Clements, for Doris Miller, for Sarah Akers, for Pam King. Here are our prayers for Dave Goff and Mary Jane McMillian, for Fran Hart and Angela Little. We pray for Marty Ludden, for Edward Brown and Harriet Stockholm. We pray for Joe Thompson and for Dick Horn. We ask you, O oh God, to grant to each of these what they most need. Lord, in your kindness, hear our prayer. And hear us now, O oh God, as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thanks once again for tuning in and being a part of our online worship service today. I hope that uh, you are doing well and that this coming week will be a good one for each of you and for all of you. And now go in peace.
And as you go, remember, keep the faith, live in hope, and love one another. May the grace of Christ, the love of God, and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with all of you this day and always. Amen. Thank you.